right, we're ready for the last preliminary bout of the evening. Saul Alvarez against Jose Miguel Cotto. You see the 13-year age advantage for Alvarez, who turned pro in Guadalajara at age 15. Three-inch height advantage for the Mexican prospect. Two-inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They weighed in a few pounds over the welterweight limit, and tonight both will enter the ring right at the middleweight limit of 160 pounds. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Saul Canelo Alvarez, Jose Miguel Cotto fight is scheduled for 10 rounds using the unified rules that you see on your screen. Jim, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each, each individual round, clean punching, effective aggressiveness, rim generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punch. Jim. All right, thank you, Harold. Jose Miguel Cotto has a record of 31 wins, one loss, one draw, 23 knockouts. Pretty sparkling record, but he hasn't fought anywhere near the same kind of opposition as his much more famous younger brother, Miguel Cotto. Miguel Cotto, of course, has been a star at 140, 147, and will now move up to 154, where on June 5, he's fighting Yuri Foreman. And both Jose Miguel and Miguel labor this year in the absence of their beloved father, Dad Cotto, whom you've seen on past HBO telecasts and particularly in his loving association with his son Miguel, passed away suddenly in January. Literally had a heart attack while driving his car and died before emergency medical relief could arrive. And now both fighters are in the ring. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, courtesy of Mayweather Promotions and Golden Boy Promotions, from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, we go to our co-featured bout of the evening. Sponsored by Tecate, Cerveza con Caracter, AT&T, GoPhone, and Unlimited. Unlimited talk and text for $60 a month. StubHub, where fans buy and sell tickets. DeWalt Tools, guaranteed tough and the motion picture Iron Man 2. In theaters everywhere, Friday, May 7th. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout, Bird Clements, Patricia, Morris Jarman, and Glenn Trowbridge. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, referee Tony Weeks. And now from the MGM Grand 10 rounds of boxing in the welterweight division. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with white, official weight, 149 pounds. His professional record, 31 victories, including 23 knockouts with only one defeat and one bout even. De Cajuas, Puerto Rico, Jose Miguel Cotto. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing red with silver. Official weight, 150 pounds. His professional record, 31 victories, with 23 knockouts and one draw. From Guadalajara, Mexico, the undefeated, Saul Panelo Alvarez. Okay, let's go, let's go, vamos. Caballeros, ustedes reciben sus instrucciones. Mira, aquí está bien, aquí no. Aquí está bien, aquí no. De los para arriba. Yo quiero una play limpia. Escúchame, cuídate. Listos, vámonos. Alvarez, a budding star in Mexico, is already in the Guinness Book of World Records. He and six brothers appeared on the same card recently in a fight. Three brothers making their debuts lost. There's a lot of excitement about Saul Alvarez's first appearance here in the United States. And as we mentioned, the official record 31 0 and 1 with 23 knockouts. He says that it really should be 44 0 and 1 with 33 knockouts. That's pretty good for a 19 year old. 
Very, very good record. You know, and that's a typical, I think, of so many guys. Hugo Cesar Chavez, Antonio Barron, a lot of those guys turn professional at 14 and 15 down there. So they get their amateur experience as professional fighters. If the kid has already had 44 professional fights, as he says he has, at age 19, is that too fast a start for his career? No, I don't think so, because they, they match him very carefully. They are not fighting quality fighters down there. And as he said when we asked him at the meeting why he didn't have a you know longer amateur career, he said there's not a good amateur program in Mexico. Jose Miguel Cotto, as you can see, is a body puncher. Hard, workmanlike fighter. Regarded as a really good test tonight for Alvarez. Eric Gomez, the matchmaker at Golden Boy. Golden Boy will handle American promotion for Alvarez, at least right now. And uh, he seemed to feel as though Cotto was exactly the right kind of sturdy, difficult, but not impenetrable opponent for Alvarez to be facing. There's a good right hand by the 19-year-old. And he is wobbled by a left hook. And he's in trouble, and Cotto's dumping him. And maybe the matchmaking was a mistake, but no, he gets out of trouble, still wobbling, still having trouble getting his feet under it. Miss, he dodges a right hand, comes back with a right. His he solution should, is to fight. He shouldn't be clinching. He's fighting instead of clinching. Well, when you're 19 and you've been so successful, you don't know a lot about having to clinch. But he's fighting back, he's trying to be intelligent and patient yeah. and maybe his head is cleared well, right may now. Have cleared. Uh, Cotto did not get to him fast enough. I think he's cleared up and he's trying to get his legs back on himself right now. Well, Cotto sure tried to get at him fast enough. Well, the same punch that landed before can land again if you can try to get to the man while he's still hurt. It was a left hook that wobbled him. <laughs> Alvarez is trying to solve everything with one big right hand. Yeah, he's physically a bigger man. You know, Cotto by nature really seemed to have the structure best for 140 pounds. But for this fight, they're fighting at a weight which is probably more comfortable for the younger fighter, Alvarez. Yeah, and you can see that Alvarez yeah, is a sturdy welterweight with yes. a big upper body. And he's only 19 and uh, came in at 160 today, so who knows how long he can hold that weight. Yeah. Uppercut by Alvarez lands. Almost landed that sizzling right hand shot. So Alvarez makes it out of the round, although he was in serious trouble Welcome. with over a minute to go. Welcome, kid, to the big time. Recuperate now. Breathe, breathe deeply. Are you good? I'm good. Everything's good. Okay. Everything's good. Detective. All right. A little bit of water now. All right, son. Now relax. Are you relaxed? Yeah, everything's good. You made one error, son, because you wanted to eat them all up. You got in too close and you opened up. And that's the first round only. There's 10 rounds. You're a better fighter. You're a better boxer. Relax. Yeah, you can see the shot that catches Alvarez, which is a left hook. And that happens often with a lot of fighters who hold their right hand up, protecting for a hook, but they hold it too far close to the ear and they leave the. Uh, the front part of the face open and they get caught with the shot. Right inside. And you see for now was just a barrage of punches, but he was able to survive most of those and come back. Well, he caught three pretty stiff punches and was able to work his way out of the ring, so that uh, speaks well of uh, his fortitude. And you heard the instructions from trainer Eddie Reynoso. It's a test for him as well. See if he can get his young fighter through this. Cotto won the round, clearly 24 out of 69. By CompuBox count, 14 out of 47 for Alvarez. Cotto has lost only one fight, and that was to Juan Diaz. Diaz was the best opponent with whom Jose Miguel Cotto has been in. So that's the water level at which he tasted defeat. And Diaz is a more accomplished fighter than Alvarez, certainly at this stage of his career. So it will be interesting to see if this pans out for Golden Boy matchmaking, which felt as though Alvarez would be okay against Mizel Cotto, Jose, Jose Miguel Cotto. Yeah, I, this is uh, part of a process of a number of promoters looking for the next Mexican or Mexican American star because there is so much interest in boxing in those communities that uh, Delahoya retired Barrera and Morales really gone uh, Marquez the two Marquezes toward the end of their career 
Um, and here is a kid who has been uh, picked out uh, to watch. Well, Emmanuel, we were talking about hooking off the jab in the last fight, yeah. and we've already seen that Alvarez does it too. Yeah, Alvarez is a very well-trained fighter. I'm looking at it, 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 Cotto's boxing very good, hasn't been hit with anything clean yet, but yeah, I'm looking at this kid, he's very good. He just keeps his hands too wide. It, that defense, which I'm always teaching about, where they keep the right hand too much to the side of the head instead of more to the center, is the perfect example. Every time he jabs, he draws his right hand to the side. Is very vulnerable to get hit, but he's got speed and power. Then that's going to probably neutralize that. Yeah, a at this stage, at this stage, a visible advantage here. Much faster feet than Jose Miguel Cotto, so he yes. can get himself into position to land shots, whereas Cotto has to keep driving forward. Yeah. Well, was, Alvarez is fighting that is really his proper weight too, and that makes a difference too. Very comfortable. A little extra weight on Cotto right now that he shouldn't have, but you know that's that's what it is. Emmanuel, you've been uh, training his brother for the fight against Foreman. Um, were they training together down there in Tampa? Good hard left yeah, hand yeah, by Alvarez. They, they, they trained together at the same time, but he goes in a little bit before Miguel. But they, they very few words, but you know, between them about trying to give each other advice when they train. They train totally separate, go past each other, never interfere with each other's training. Good counter right hand up and under from Oops. Chris uh, Alvarez and Cotto's glove touched the canvas. And Alvarez Six. has just evened up the Watch knockdown on the scorecard. Come in. Hey. Okay. Ha. That was big. He finishes the first round down 10-8 and comes back to get a knockdown in round number two. Listen, listen, you can't do those pauses right in front of him. You can't. If you do those pauses in front of him, and you know your target, bend your waist side to side. All right? What are you talking about? You didn't want to hit him? You got to hit him a lot? Hit him a lot now. Hit him a lot now. Here we see Cotto coming in, landing the right hand a little too far out. This is, this is because of the height advantage and the disadvantage that he has, throwing his punches too far out. And he really lost his balance more than anything else. But he was hit before he went down, so officially it's a knockdown. Kid got lucky. There's Juan Manuel Marquez, the premier Mexican fighter of this moment, unless you believe that the mantle has been passed to Eric Montiel of Los Mochis, who is uh, scoring big knockouts in fight after fight down in the below featherweight weight classes. But uh, the bottom line is that there's, there's an opening at the top of Mexican boxing for a superstar to replace Eric Morales, Marco Antonio Barrera, and Juan Manuel Marquez. Uh, so far, Alvarez emerges as the most likely candidate to assume that position, unless it's going to be Montiel continuing his superstardom in the lower weight classes. Yeah, but 19 and a welterweight, and uh, if he should come back from that uh, early problem he had, show some uh, stuff, come back from that adversity, that would only make him bigger back home. Very good counter ref reflexes, you know, and he's taking advantage of his height and size. He's keeping Cotto lunging, coming in off balance, and trying to catch him with counter punches as he's getting off balance coming in. He landed nine punches in the last minute of round two. That was something of a comeback rally, and now they're giving and taking in round number three. And uh, if, if Jose can keep that pressure on him, it's going to be very interesting to see if he goes into seven, eight rounds, how he would hold up under pressure because he hasn't been able to land too many clean punches on Jose for the most part, neither. Well, what Jose Cotto is doing is is following young Alvarez around the ring, in effect, yeah. chasing a puncher. It's, it's what puncher. you're not supposed to do. Yep, yeah, and Alvarez is trying to keep that little space. Looked like he uh, brought up his glove closer to the front of his face, Emmanuel, <laughs> after you uh, analyzed the problem from the first round. But, but what he's doing right now, he's keeping every keeping the distance for everything that Jose Cotto does. He has almost learned to do it and get off balance, and he counter punches him as he comes in. See there? Same thing again. And but he steps back and steps tries back, to show yeah, that yeah, little right. uppercut. Just enough to make you get out of balance. And then there you go. There it is again. It's a hook uppercut, but he always pulls back and punches and pivots off on the punch. From the way he fights, you'd never guess he was 19 and been 
fighting for five years. That, that's what I was going to say. Like, you know, what you look at, he's 19, but he's got about 30-some fights. He's come from the family with six brothers, so he's been boxing since he was a kid. So no big capital record, but just been raised in boxing, so to say. You may see on his trunks the word cantaloupe. That means cinnamon. They call him cinnamon for that reddish hair. Yeah. But looks more Irish than he does Mexican. Yep. <laughs> All right. We're going to go to Floyd Mayweather's dressing room between rounds, and you're going to be watching as Nassim Richardson, Shane Mosley's trainer, watches. Rafael Garcia wrapping Mayweather's hands. Mayweather regards Garcia as a genius artiste in the hand wrapping category. Maybe Richardson will learn something. Of course, this is significant because Nassim Richardson called off both the hand wraps on Bernard, or excuse me, on uh, Felix Trinidad in Madison Square Garden back in 2001 on behalf of his fighter Bernard Hopkins and called off the hand wrapping on Antonio Margarito last January in Staples Center in Los Angeles on behalf of Shane Mosley. Uh, and Mayweather did have problems with his hands earlier in his career, and he gives credit uh, to this man uh, for solving them. Garcia has been in boxing for more than 60 years. That's a lot of boxing. Round four. Saul Alvarez in the red trunks against Jose Miguel Cotto in the black and white. Harold, how do you have it Cook so far? Him. Two rounds to one, 29, 27, Saul Canelo Alvarez. Jim, in round one, Canelo, Canelo Alvarez actually never went down. He went into the ropes. Tony Weeks didn't call it a knockdown. Therefore, I scored a 10 to nine. But in round two, Jose Miguel Cotto's gloves did touch the canvas. Therefore, I scored it just like the judges should, 10 to eight in favor of Canelo Alvarez. I thought Canelo Alvarez led the cleaning shots to pull out round three. So two to one, Canelo Alvarez. Well, I'm thrilled you corrected me, Harold. I was unaware, did not notice that Tony Weeks didn't rule it a knockdown in round one. So, therefore, the one point difference from the score that I might have anticipated, and thank you, Harold, for your sharp eyes. Good uppercut. That was a little five punch combination. If Cotto could just get a little bit closer and close the gap, everything that he's doing is just a little too short because of the distance that uh, Alvarez is keeping in the height. But if he could just get a little bit closer, he would be very effective. No, 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 no. Alvarez is starting to put more mustard on his punches. Having recovered from the shock of getting hurt by Cotto in round one. He's trying to load it up a little bit. Right there. Hard right hands up and under. And the body shot. Another well-placed uppercut with the left hand. That was brilliant, precise punching by the 19-year-old. On the inside at very short range. Don't often see that. And he got something significant onto every punch. He wasn't just tapping it. He was landing shots. At the same uh, time, uh, Cotto kept coming. Yep. That's right. If Cotto would attack him now, he would be very smart because right now Alvarez is taking a breather, is recharging, and Cotto is just following him around and letting him recharge without attacking him. With that uppercut is well delivered and starting to gain some purchase. And look at the determination of Jose Miguel Cotto, who keeps his head right in there and stays on top of Alvarez. Terrific test for the young fighter being provided by Jose Miguel. That was crowd-pleasing action. 
Let's go back to Shane Mosley's dressing room. Shane Mosley, for this fight, agreed to abide by United States anti-doping agency drug testing principles, which means that he has been tested eight, 10, maybe 11 times in preparation for the fight, randomly, as has Floyd Mayweather. It is a one-time only arrangement, Larry, not necessarily something we will see extended into the future. You're right. Uh, the commission of uh, here in Las Vegas, it says they're watching this to see how it evolves. It's an it's a expensive procedure, $20,000 or more. Not a, uh, obviously, you can't have it for every fight. Uh, the promoters would have to agree to pay for such tests. Uh, they say they will not make a decision on whether it would become routine uh, until after considering what happened here. And you see the arrival of Muhammad Ali here. Not a frequent visitor to big fights now, but always makes, of course, an enormous impact when he's in the arena. And Ali is here tonight. Power shots in round four. Alvarez, 34 out of 53. What a round for him. Cotto threw 51, but didn't land as many, only getting 11 to find the, the target. I should add, Jim, that Nazim Richardson, uh, in a telephone press conference, uh, told uh, Roger Mayweather that every time they brought up the business uh, with Shane Mosley of the drug testing and fail his failure of, of a drug test drug testing that he would remind everybody that uh, Mayweather has used painkillers for his hands uh, which he did in some early fights uh, remember we had one in Michigan where he admitted he had needed it in both of his hands well, as almost every boxing fan now knows, Shane Mosley dabbled with performance-enhancing drugs prior to his second bout with Oscar De La Hoya in 1993. Uh, at first, tried the tactic of saying that he didn't know exactly what he was doing and that he had been fooled into taking performance-enhancing drugs. Excuse me, 1993, not 1993, 2003. 2003. Yeah, seven years ago. Uh, eventually, Mosley was forced by circumstances and by grand jury testimony and depositions to come clean and acknowledge that he had taken both steroids and EPO. It's because of that that he has been raked over the coals in public sometimes by the Mayweathers on that issue, and that was what Nassim Richardson was responding to when he said, we're going to talk about your hands. <laughs> Mosley contends that he did take those uh, drugs, but that he was unaware that they were illegal whatever, he was certainly responsible. And of course, the proof of the pudding on De La Hoya's long-term reaction to all that is that Mosley's his partner at Golden Boy. And the, it always, what's always been interesting to me is, is that Mosley performed much better against De La Hoya in their first fight than in the second fight when he looked uh, like he was lumbering around a little from too much muscle. Hard left hook by Alvarez. I think what's emerging here, Emmanuel, what we're seeing from this 19-year-old is that he has unusual athletic coordination for boxing and Very great timing. Yes, great, great timing coordination. for when to deliver the shots. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and what I see is great poise. And he's hurting Cotto with those right hands and the left hooks. Cotto not throwing back. Finally releases his hands, but not before Alvarez got in about eight or ten clean shots. Cotto's got a great chin, too. He's never been seriously hurt in this whole fight. And has been hit with some tremendous shots. Well, you saw Muhammad Ali. So let's just fill out the dossier with some of the other great superstars in the house. Ray Leonard, who fought in a fight like this against Tommy Hearns in September of 1981. Yesterday, they took to the dais here and talked about their experiences in the press room. And there's Oscar De La Hoya, who is, of course, the promoter for the fight and who fought in a fight like this against Felix Trinidad in 1999. Yeah. The difference between the Leonard Hearns first fight and the fight we have tonight was that they were both in their primes in their early 20s and it was an even money fight. A lot of people were interested in the fight, had passionate feelings about the fight. Uh, they had favorites in the fight, but nobody knew who was going to win the fight. And you were there, Emmanuel, I've I heard. Was there. 
<laughs> you know, and I'm looking at these odds of four to one to me. Well, I have a real problem dealing with that. I mean, I think Floyd definitely should be the favorite, but I just don't see it four to one at all. I just don't see that. Even though, you know, as you said, you know, he's a little bit past his prime meaning change, but still he's fighting very good. Shane, Shane says that he brings no real emotional response to the notion of being a four to one underdog. Emmanuel, if Tommy Hearns had been a four to one underdog against Ray Leonard on the night of September 16, 1981, he would have thought something about it, right? Yes, he would have. And Shane is maybe a little too mild a person. person. As a matter of fact, the action when the fight took place, Tommy Hearns was the favorite to the last minute, but the Detroit people came in and bet big money. And Hearns was the favorite when it finished up. Amazing. Yeah, great, great. The fact that the, the betting went just like the fight went back and forth. Good hard right hand by Alvarez. Once again, the timing and the ability to throw these shots with extreme accurate precision like that. Well, if Alvarez uh, does come through in this fight, uh, it will be a good test for him. I yes. Mean, Cotto is giving him a good, good fight, right? He's taking everything in, and it's, it's been blocking a lot of punches. A lot of Alvarez's punches haven't been that clean as much as it seems. But when he has landed good punches, Cotto is uh, on Cotto. Cotto has come right back, so he's had a real test tonight. Why would he be fighting a strong young welterweight when he himself is a junior welterweight? Well, I think he's had a long time off. I'm, I'm not sure, but I think it's been better. Well, about also, he told yeah. us it was the best payday of his career. That might have something to do with well, it. I didn't know about that. <laughs> but he's fighting a very good fight from sending time off, and to be fighting a good young prospect like Alvarez. Jose Miguel Cotto had three fights last year, only one in 07 and none in 08. So he was largely inactive in 07 and 08, and uh, that's... That's what gives him what he thinks is the freshness to come on and fight a guy like Alvarez. But Alvarez is very sharp, very crisp, and punching with full authority and crispness. Alvarez landed 17 punches in the last minute of round number five, and now as the last minute of round six arrives, he heats it up again. Keeps his stamina all the way through a three minute round and uses the last 30 seconds to a minute of a round to make hay. You know, see the numbers on power punches here. When when a fighter has a chance to be a real good one, it shows up at 19 and 20, doesn't it, Emmanuel? Yes, it does. And, and I, I like the fact that he started early because the fact that, you know, he doesn't have that type of an amateur background in it, but he's a very well-schooled fighter. He threw a right-hand lead right at the end of the round that was so shocking to Jose Miguel Cotto because of the timing. You know, he just didn't expect him to release that punch at that moment. Boom, right off the chin. Ready? All right. What, the towel on? No. You heard him. You heard his body. You heard his body good. It was good. The water. Massage his arms now. Breathe, breathe. This, this round was much better. How are we going? He's got nothing. He's got nothing. He doesn't want to fight you. Come on, take advantage of that. Take advantage. Joe Santiago training Jose Miguel Cotto. Joe Santiago was, of course, the trainer of Miguel Cotto for a couple of fights. Power shots in round six. Alvarez, 30 out of 45, 67%. Cotto, 15 out of 41. This is a solid effort by Jose Miguel Cotto, but he's getting drowned by the extreme timing and athletic coordination of Saul Alvarez. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim, five rounds to one, 59, 54, Canelo Alvarez. Boy, I tell you, Chip, this kid may only be 19 years old, but I tell you, he's got one wicked left hook. Jose Miguel Cotto de definitely takes a very, very good punch. You know, otherwise he would have been out of there. Canelo Alvarez has won every single round except the first with that real good left hook. And I tell you, I never saw a guy fight off the ropes as good as he does since Roy Jones Jr. I mean, he is terrific coming off those ropes. Five to one, Alvarez. Cotto landed a right hand, best punch in a while. 
Most of them are partially blocked as Alvarez is keeping his hands way up. Well, we're going to see now in these late rounds how, how this youngster uh, can stand the constant pressure over the course of a 10-round fight. Body shot, well delivered. If he throws a jab, can you call it a cinnamon stick? <laughs> so, Emmanuel, is uh, Miguel Cotto, younger brother, watching tonight at training camp in Tampa? Yes, he is. He's watching the entire show. Want to say hello to your new fighter? <laughs> I'm anxious to get back to the gym Monday. Well, he's got a big assignment against Yuri Foreman on June 5. And for those who have not seen Yuri Foreman, he is a brilliantly skilled boxer. Very, very talented fighter. Moves, punches very well. Very well schooled fighter. On the other hand, a powder puff puncher compared to your guy, right? Yeah, but the guys that uh, Foreman has told him, guys, and nobody have knocked out neither. He's not a great puncher, but he's not that bad a puncher neither. Are you talking on the record or off the record? No, here, I'm, right? I'm being honest. <laughs> no, I have a lot of respect for you, Foreman. Me and Miguel, the whole camp does. He may fight well off the ropes, but I'm not sure it's the best place in the world to be no. this long. No, but it buys him a little energy. Now, when this round comes to a close, we're going to get into the subject of how Mayweather Mosley was made. Some of you may remember September 19 of last year, Floyd Mayweather made his big comeback after 21 months in, quote, retirement against Juan Manuel Marquez. And immediately after the fight, when Mayweather was being interviewed by our Max Kellerman, Shane Mosley was in the ring. There is an, another truly great fighter here tonight who's your size, Sugar Shane Mosley, what are the possibility that we see that fight in the near future? Uh, uh, well, um, Shane Mosley, Shane Mosley is one hell of a fighter, and I, I don't take that away from Shane. You know what I'm saying? I let, I let uh, Al Heyman and Leonard Ellaby conduct my bouts, and then we'll go from there. I'm not, I'm not scared of Shane Mosley. I'm not scared of no fighter. We just want to get it on. That's all. I mean, the fans want to see a great fight. Me and, me and Money Midweather. Let's get this on. Let's do, do it. Well, it's like this. It's, 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 hey, hold on, wait, 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 wait. All right, that's it. Hold on. Every, Bernard, everybody calm down. Floyd, Floyd. Shane, ple Shane please. Floyd, con let's concentrate here. Let's concentrate. You good. Bernard. Obviously, Floyd Mayweather motioned Shane Mosley over to be a part of that, but then seemed surprised when Mosley decided that he was free to speak on the microphone as well. That seemed to cause the confusion in the ring. One thing led to another, however, when the negotiations for Pacquiao versus Mayweather broke down over the issue of drug testing, Shane stepped up and said, hey, I'll take any test you want, and thus the, know, uh, the arrival of this fight. But you know what interests me about that? In how it might relate to the fight itself, that Mayweather was standing there in charge. It's his territory. He's just won a fight. Looked terrific in a one-sided fight, and he didn't expect Mosley to jump back at him. And Mosley did. Is that what's going to happen tonight? Fascinating to see. <laughs> Incidentally, Jose Miguel Cotto had his best round numerically in round number seven, landing 29 punches and throwing 80. Highest numbers of the fight in both categories for Cotto. The difference, of course, he's still not landing with the same kind of impact and precision that Alvarez shows when he lands his punches. But I tell you what, Cotto is fighting a very good fight, and he's really taking Alvarez to school tonight in terms of getting experience. So the 19-year-old will yeah. emerge from this a better fighter, you yes, think? Yes, I think so, because, you know, he has not been able to really hurt Cotto. Even though he's hitting him with clean shots, he's never had him ever hurt. And the only person who's been hurt has been Alvarez himself in the fight. Do you think that at 140, Cotto can give some of those good uh, junior welterweights. Yes, I am very battle. impressed tonight. Yes, considering the fact that I know he's about 10 pounds overweight. And look at that, he's taking all of these terrific, terrific, terrific shots from Alvarez, and it's still coming back, and it's very relaxed. It doesn't even seem to be exhausted. Now, just look how 
almost clinical Alvarez is here, trying to break down Cotto on the ropes. You don't expect to use clinical as an adjective for a 19-year-old fighter, <laughs> but he is. There was a moment in 08, a couple of years ago, when Alvarez went four straight fights going the distance. He won four consecutive 10-round decisions in Mexico against opponents whose names we don't know, but the fourth one was Larry Mosley of Southern California, who is a veteran from, you know, 10, 15 years ago. We had seen him in some lesser fights. And fight. he was 17 at the time, Alvarez. And uh, Alvarez told us that the reason for the four consecutive route going performances was that he needed to learn what he would learn from going rounds. So he says, I decided to dispense with knocking people out for a few fights so that I could learn what I was going to learn. Now, whether that's true or not, <laughs> it's a remarkable comment for he's a fighter fight, to make. He's fighting like a seasoned fighter. He's rolling his shoulders, counting, punching, pulling back, and counting with hooks, uppercuts. Stop, 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 stop. And stop. not wasting any punches, punching wild and recklessly. Ah. Now, we're going to show you a live shot from Shane Mosley's dressing room, and the import is this. Nassim Richardson has just arrived back in Mosley's dressing room and is getting ready to wrap Shane's hands. We're just about to go to the ninth round of the fight between Alvarez and Cotto, which is the last round before Mosley and Mayweather will enter the ring. Emmanuel, what are the implications of this? Well, I don't know. I, I don't think it's good. He should have got his hand wrapped a long time ago because what's happening is everything is going to be needed on a rush mountain now, and that is not good. You know, and to properly wrap a fighter's hand, professional, professional fighter in a tough fight like this, you should always try to get that dead as early as you can, at least a half an hour. Manager uh, Leonard Ellerby is there to watch on behalf of Floyd. That's him near foreground on the right side of your screen as you watch. Nassim Richardson getting started and obviously in no terrific hurry to move forward with the wrapping of Shane, Shane Mosley's hands. And I have to assume this means that we're going to have a little wait between fights and we're going to have time to do a little bit of an on-camera setup for this fight. It's just a wild guess on my part. It's not a wild guess. <laughs> I haven't wrapped a hand before. <laughs> Combi box numbers in the eighth round. Thank you, Emmanuel. Alvarez was 29 out of 80 in that round. Those are exactly the numbers that Cotto had in the preceding round. Cotto was only 6 of 50 in that round as Alvarez decided to take over and did so, dominating the round, landing 24 of 43 power shots. You may not have wrapped many hands, Jim, but I think you've wrapped a few shows. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I'll probably wrap this one eventually. right on the button. Alvarez looks as though he has settled into the notion that he's going to be going the distance here with Jose Miguel Cotto. So a knockout would come as a spontaneous product of something big rather than a plan that Alvarez has in his head. He's trying to win the fight by decision at this point. I just think he's trying to win the fight. If the knockout comes, it comes. But he's not certainly not trying to sit on a lead here. I don't think there's any reason to say that the punching power is less than what was built. I think this is this is a strong performance by Cotto to stand in and take these shots. Yeah, I, I don't think he was billed as a knockout puncher. He was just billed as a good boxer, puncher, aggressive, smart. And if there ever, if we've ever seen a, a young Tyro uh, with a chance to be something, we're seeing one now. Beautiful right hand right over the top. Tremendous quickness on that right hand. Cotto seems to be buzzed. Cotto keeping his hands up. Not really throwing back. Alvarez targeting right hand shots. Targeting right hand shots. Tony Weeks looking, looking. How much punishment does Tony Weeks want to allow Jose Miguel Cotto to take? Cotto's got to start punching back, otherwise this fight will He's be He's throwing stopped. back, but without any velocity. Alvarez is teeing off, and Tony Weeks is going to stop it right there. They were just above us, 
and you could see Tony Weeks' mind working as he watched and watched and waited and finally saw the moment. Maybe we have seen a piece of the future. That was great stuff. And he gets the knockout that I suggested he wasn't looking for, and I think you were right. He was just winning the fight, and it happened. Officially, it's the 32nd knockout of Alvarez's career. Or check it, 24th knockout of Alvarez's career. 32nd victory, 24th knockout, officially. He says, again, there are 13 more fights, 10 of which are knockouts, that have to be located and put onto the official record. He closed the show, landing 38 out of 62 power shots. Quite a demonstration by young Alvarez. A prospect with a capital P. Yep. Won't be the last time we see him. What a body for a welterweight. You don't see an upper body like that on many welterweights, Larry. A strong Maybe kick. Shane Mosley had a body like that, but uh, not many. Of course, Mosley had it in the lightweight division and uh, had, had to come up to welterweight. This kid's there. So now let's go to Michael Buffer for the particulars on Alvarez's dramatic ninth round finish of Cotto. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 2.59, round number nine. 2.51, 2.51, round number nine. The winner by TKO victory as referee, Tony Weeks calls a halt to the contest. Saul Canelo Alvarez. First time in Jose Miguel Cotto's career that he's been knocked out once again. He is the older brother of the bigger star in the family, Miguel Cotto. Final CompuBox numbers will show Alvarez's dominance. Remember, in case you missed it, he was in trouble in the first round. I thought he was down. Referee Tony Weeks did not rule it a knockout uh, as Cotto caught him with a left hook. But after that, it was mostly all Alvarez. Landing 223 uh, and therefore landing 88 more, throwing 64 more, much higher connect percentage, 54% of his power shots. And, you know, one point we've made often, if you are a puncher of any kind of power at all, and you land more than 50% of your power shots, you might be putting the other guy away. And that's what happened with Alvarez, as that series of right hands at the end was too sturdy and too good for Tony Weeks to allow it to continue. But let's take a look at final punch zone and look at the punches which landed on Jose Miguel Cotto. 29 left hand body shots, most of the hard work done upstairs. He lands both the right hook, or excuse me, the right cross and the left hook with great efficiency.